hostile left standing. Hostiles are shooting. Target down. Target. See a single enemy remaining. Hostile. Grenade out. Hey guys, be more here with a quick video. Since the new classes released recently, I figured I would give an overview on how you should be looking to use them in Ghost War. First of all, let me give thanks to everyone who watched my most recent video for the Deep State review. The love is felt and appreciated. It was and is my highest performing video so far, so thank you. Anyway, let's dive right in, but please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more Ghost Recon Ghost War content. So let's dive in, and the first up is the Engineer class. So my first initial thought of this class was, man, this is going to be useless. An ammo drone and a defense drone. But after about 20 hours or so, I can say that both of these are very useful and dare I say effective in their own right. Along with the bonuses to grenade launcher, the class is well-rounded but not doing anything above and beyond special. So let's go over the proficiencies and we only have two of them. They are the grenade launcher proficiency and more damage to drones. On paper, these do not seem like much because they aren't really that much. In terms of PvP, these don't really mean much of anything unless you plan to use a build for a grenade launcher. Which is fun, but it's not too serious. Target down. Target. Only one hostile left standing. So in the raid, the engineer class is top tier, of course. Coblin, plus the damage to drones stacked everywhere you can, makes the raid very easy to complete in a comparison to other classes. For PvP, I guess you have the benefit of not being proficient in any weapon, so you can use and choose whatever weapon you prefer. So that's good and bad, meaning you still have to stack accuracy or handling on gloves or gun to maintain the initial recoil. Anyway, let's continue on our loadouts and what you might be using with the class. If you're playing PvE, the sensor hack is no-brainer. Your other two perks are dealer's choice. For PvP, like I said, unless you're going with an explosion build, your only choice there would be explosive expert. Otherwise, all three choices are up to you. The only thing I would recommend with this class is to stack some handling or some accuracy somewhere, as it's not proficient in any of the main weapon categories. The class item for the engineer is pretty great for the team, and once again, great in the raid. In PvE, Every player on the squad should equip the LMG and then grab some ammo as it gives them an increase in damage handling and recoil management. For PvP, it provides handling and recoil management with no damage increase but still has its place if you can get your team to pick it up before they all sprint away of course. Now we get to the meat of the engineer class, the drone. In PvE, the drone is solid. Recently in the raid, I've been using it to take care of ads and it does its job. Although. Ever since they described the drone and explained that it auto-targets enemies that are close by, I was hoping it didn't work as such in PvP. Well, it does, and you can have it one or two ways when it comes to the drone. And in my personal opinion, I think it's a little cheesy and lowers the skill gap. But hey, I don't make the game, so it is what it is. Sure, it should act as a defensive drone, but in reality, you can use this drone to do too much. It's almost playing the game for you. Let me explain. First things first is that the class skill lasts a little too long. I haven't done any tests, but I would assume it probably lasts anywhere between a minute and a half and two minutes. With the way that PvP games play out, once you get two adrenaline shots, you basically have a floating, shooting, roided up, two foot, ill-tempered security guard letting you know potential threats in the area. Not just the area, but 50 meters out, and you do not have to see them. The drone will start shooting right away as soon as someone is close by, and on top of that, the drone gives you a little laser indicator of where it's shooting. In this scenario, you could be sitting behind cover and waiting for an enemy to go by, but if he has a drone, your cover is all but blown. So in my opinion, this is a little cheesy and doesn't promote skill, but also on the other hand, this is a great entry class for anyone who wants to play PvP. As you can see in the clip, the drone will still attack after death, so in a small way it can still be useful. Do not think this is a skill that you can use in combat, you must use this before an engagement, as the animation to bring the drone out is way too long. But bringing the drone out before a fight, telling you where the closest enemy is, makes this an offensive tool, in my opinion. I don't make the game, and I might not necessarily like the drone in PvP, but the rest of the class is solid. 
so no real problem with it but in terms of ghost war top players will still float to assault class and sharpshooter class as those are the top two dogs on the court the drone will make a bad player good but won't make a good player great if you understand what i'm saying okay let's move on to the echelon class a class that i think has arrived pretty much as balanced as it could get for a class with a wall hack ability so the echelon class has a higher stealth bonus in shadows for pve that is great you could tell the class almost does panther better than panther add slim shadow and you're basically sam fisher for pvp this bonus doesn't mean much at all but it doesn't hurt i guess handgun proficiency while definitely super nice in pve it has a shelf life in pvp Pistol builds are possible, but I just don't know why you would ever put yourself through that torture of pistol recoil in this game. If you want a very high skill build in PvP, go with this class plus the Pistolero perk for added damage and cooldown reduction in technique. Just as well in single player and PvE, you should be using this pistol perk. If using this class, the added damage on top is definitely noticeable. Just as with the Engineer class, I would also recommend putting on some accuracy and handling perks on your weapons or armor to compensate for the proficiency missing in a main class of weapons. The biggest thing I was worried about is that the Echelon class would come with a wall hack ability that made it so OP that it made it the best class in both single player and Ghost War. Well, safe to say, both items come in relatively effective. The shock pistol in PvE is absolutely amazing. It puts drones to sleep for the duration of the invasion unless you are alerted again. Nothing feels better than putting a four-wheel drone dead in its tracks with the flick of the wrist. It also damages enemy soldiers too, usually killing them in one hit. In PvP, I would say it has its place. The AoE circle and gun are a little clunky to use. I imagine that it is for the sake of balance, otherwise it would be too powerful. But in the right hands, this is 100% the best cover pusher in the game now. So I would say it requires a higher amount of skill to use to actually be effective. So now we move on to the class ability, which is Sonar Echelon Vision. It gives you the ability to see enemies through walls and objects. I must say this came in pretty balanced. I honestly don't know if they need to do too much to it as we get further in the life cycle of Ghost Recon. For PvE, the sonar doesn't last too long to make the rest of the game trivial. I did use it in my immersive playthrough as a way to detect enemies since I did not have their markers visible in the world. Safe to say it came in helpful plenty of times. For Ghost War, the class skill is pretty tamed I must say. I would say it detects about 50 meters radius for maybe about 10 seconds. At first I thought the timer was too short, but after extensive play I find it to be pretty spot on with the flow of Ghost War. It can clear out an entire building in a matter of seconds and you're basically a solo-esque mobile sensor grenade for the duration of the class skill. It can be used as a rusher, being able to go right into the hot zone and identify targets in the area. Great support class able to relay information back to the squad if given the opportunity. It's also a great closer as it can identify the last player alive that is for surely hiding behind something. So the wall hack ability is useful, but it's not OP. Top players, like I said, will still gravitate towards the assault class and sharpshooter class, but Echelon has a place somewhere after those classes. It has more team utility than Panther, but at the same time is a risk reward as you have to close the distance in order to detect an enemy. Along with the class item, the class is very solid and I'm very happy with how they balanced it. In the right hands, this will be deadly for sure. I think both classes have come in pretty balanced with the game. It is so important that we recognize how hard that is for a video game. They are both not super weak or super strong. In the right hands, they could be deadly. I certainly will continue to be using Echelon as long as I see fit until I get sweaty and pull out the Assault class. But for right now, these classes have arrived pretty spot on and I can't imagine they would need to do too much to them other than a couple tweaks here or there. Anyway, that's it for the class breakdown. Let me know what you think. If you think you like these, I will try to do them for other classes, along with the class tier list gonna come out soon. Class tier list is taking a little bit longer because I think there's a lot of factors that I want to put into it and set up some rules before I go ahead and release the video. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next week with more Ghost Recon, Ghost War content. Be more. Med kit, come get supplies. They got me pinned. I hear gunfire. Watch your fire. Target friendly. Only one hostile.
hostile left standing. 